What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the brewery. Today we are, as I mentioned on last week's video, working on cutting the proper line length and setting the pressure, serving pressure, for our double IPA that we just put on uh, tap or in the keg. We're looking to tap it today. So I uh, wanted to kind of show you what the process is for that and get started. So I'll turn you around here. It's like I need to clean the lens just a touch. Pardon me. Okay, you're just going to need a couple tools, something to cut your beer line. You'll probably need a glass of hot water to slide your 3 16 line, which is recommended, over your quarter inch barbed fittings, which are also pretty typical, uh, and a tape measure if I didn't mention that already. So one tool that I like to use is from Mike, what is this? MikeSoltis.com. This is a hose length calculator for your keyser uh, or for serving any beer. And I like this. I've used it in the past. There are others available if you just search um, on Google for a beer line length calculator. And the other thing I like to do is just Google the type of beer that you're serving and find the recommended serving pressure. So we're going to search here for a double IPA, what they recommend. And it looks like the standard is just kind of right in your uh, expected range. About 10 to 12 would be kind of in the middle of that. So we're just going to go right at about 12 PSI and use that. So if we go back to the calculator, I'll actually turn this around. Let's take a look here. So we're going to set our CO2 pressure to 12, as we just discussed. Our hose diameter is 3 16 so that's 0.1875 inches in diameter. Then we need to measure the vertical distance between our keg and our tap. And it's not going to be much because I'm using a keg up on the step of my keyser and my tap is not much higher than that. If you can see here, here is, actually right here, is our outlet and here's our tap. So they're essentially level. We're just going to put in there something like one inch at the most. So we'll go back to our calculator. It wants to know in feet and for one inch, that's a twelfth of a foot. What is a twelfth in decimal form? Good question. Let's just go with 0.175. Because I know that 0.25, a fourth of a foot, would be three inches. And half of that would be inch and a half. That'd be a sixth of a foot. Half of that, we're pretty dang close. Flow rate. 10 seconds per pint is pretty average. That's a pretty good rate, so we'll leave that alone. Our final specific gravity we measured yesterday, that came out to 1012, if I remember correctly, or last week, according to the video. Roughness of the tubing, we'll leave that alone because I have no clue. So the recommended hose length is 10.59 feet. And just for fun, I'm going to play with this estimated vertical distance number and we'll go quite a lot higher just to see how that changes. Nothing happened. Let's go even higher. Let's go to half a foot. Hardly changed. So we're shooting for about a ten and a half foot hose length. So what we're going to do, I imagine this section of hose that I already had cut is too short. But I'll set you up and we'll measure that just in case, and if it is too short, we'll cut a new hose and I'll show you how to get that fit up and installed in the keyser. Yeah, this is going to be closer to a 5 foot line, I can already tell, so we're going to save this for later. And I'm just going to pull off my IPA tap that I chose, pull off the tailpiece. That's that piece there with the gasket. 
and we'll use that. So we need to grab our line. I've got it in the cupboard down here. And they're recommending that we cut a ten and a half foot chunk of this. This is just a vinyl line. I think this came from Amazon. It's made by ATP Pneumatics. Vinyl Flex is what it's called. And I had read a Brewlosophy article. If you haven't read anything on Brewlosophy, I recommend that. They go into depth with experiments on certain theories in brewing or comparing certain things um, left and right and seeing what difference it makes, if any. And one thing they did was beer line. And if I remember right, they basically said vinyl versus the fancy stuff didn't make much of a difference. So that's what I've got. Okay, we've got two feet. Three... Four. I'm going to start over at four. Five. Six feet there. I should have untangled more of this. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to measure out four more feet, and that'll put us at our 10-foot length. And here's our 10-foot section. Roughly. We're pretty close. That's all you need. So we'll set that aside. And as I mentioned, you're going to want a glass of hot water, because what we've got to do is stretch this 3 16 line over this quarter inch barb and it helps quite a bit if it's soft and you can do so easily so what we're going to do is attach our tailpiece on one end and our beverage out or our beer out quick disconnect on the other end so I'll get all that set with my hot water and show you what that process looks like okay we've got everything set here Hot water, we're just going to soak each end of the line for a little while. We've got our, I like to use flare, and I can talk more about this later, but I like flare because the process of disconnecting your line from whatever it's attached to, whether it be a disconnect or a tailpiece or uh, what else, I can't even think right now, but whatever it's attached to, um, you don't have to cut the line to reattach it to something else and waste the line. You can just keep the line for later use and undo your um, flare fitting. So I just like it for that reason. And I think it's a better connection. You risk a hose clamp on a barb leaking where something like this is most likely not going to leak. We'll disconnect our... 5 16 liquid flare fitting from the other day when we were transferring. And we're going to now attach this to our quarter inch. Not too tight, just snug is good. And one tip is to attach your flare fitting if you're using a barb like this. Attach it to whatever you're using before you try to put the line on. Otherwise, you're trying to push against that barb with nothing on the backside to hold it. So you're going to be fighting yourself quite a bit there. Okay, our line is heated up and nice and squishy. So we'll just slide this on. like that, and the other end on the tailpiece. Don't forget your gasket. 
Now we're going to go inside the keyser, make our attachment, and once we get in there I want to give you a special tip about line placement and where you want to put your excess line. So we're going to start by attaching our tailpiece to our beer shank. You can see here I've just got my IPA labeled next to the root beer. So we'll stick it right on there. Again, making sure the gasket is in place. And then we'll grab our crescent wrench. That's an important brewery tool to have as a crescent wrench. Or they do make kind of some multi-tool wrenches, tap wrenches or whatever they call them that have, I think about everything that you'll need, every size that you require. Not too tight, it's got an o-ring in there so that prevents you from having to over tighten it. And make sure that you've attached your tailpiece before you attach your liquid out. If you attach your liquid disconnect without your tailpiece and your keg is pressurized, which ours is, you're going to be squirting beer everywhere. So Now we want to make sure we put our line in a nice neat coil up on top of the keg. One thing is you don't want your line to dip below the top of your keg or you'll run into issues, allegedly. So I like to just do a nice, you can see there with the mango and the root beer, they're coiled up on top of the keg. Then we'll simply make our attachment to the liquid out, pull up on the collar, push down, and we have successfully tapped our double IPA. So why do we care about line length? A couple reasons. The main reason is that we want to pour a uh, non-foamy, with the perfect amount of a head, in the right amount of time, beer. And the only way that we can do that, well there's two ways we can do that. We can vary the pressure of the CO2, but we already determined that there's a certain pressure that's recommended for each beer style. So if our pressure is set, for example root beer or any soda you're going to serve way high at maybe 20, 25, 30 PSI, where uh, I had a Colshan a while ago, you serve that at 18 as recommended. I found that 14 worked better. Or your ales, you're going to serve maybe 7 to 13 is what the search uh, showed us a little while ago. So if your pressure is set, now the only way that we have to control the speed at which that beer is served, and in turn the amount of foam that's produced in the glass, is through the length of our beer hose. And the reason that the length makes a difference is that it slows down the flow before the beer gets from the keg to the tap and ultimately the glass, it slows down the flow um, through friction. And so what all those numbers are doing is calculating the amount of friction that will be produced by the thickness or the diameter and the friction or whatever the roughness of the tubing was the pressure and the percentage of the beer, or the thickness of the beer, and is calculating that all out to give you the perfect line length, or close to, um, for the beer you're serving at the pressure and temperature you're serving it and everything. So anyway, that's a little bit on that. Um, and if you tune in next week, I'm going to let this carbonate for another couple days, and we will test out our perfect pour. So. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video.